Right. You can see my screen okay, Well. Yeah, you're coming through. Okay, good. Hey, good afternoon, everyone. Sorry for running a minute late here. Got Will and Will here. Howdy. Will's World Order. Um, let me get all my stuff up here. If you have any questions, you can. We don't have any pre submitted questions today. So if you got anything, just use raise hand, ask it in chat, ask it in QA, and we will, we will get to you. Hey, Jeff, how are you, sir? Oh, okay. Looking for a good way to lay out a string match step with many paths around 15 or 20. Hmm. That is a fair question. What can we do there? Don't know. Maybe some placeholder steps to try to help keep some things organized, maybe. Let's see here. I'm going to go ahead and unmute you, sir. All right. So you got a string match step with a bunch of match strings. Hey, Will. Hey, man. How are you? This is just a question that's kind of been bugging the guys for a little bit. Uh, so I did use the placeholder steps, but the problem mm -hmm. is that, well, there's actually two, two things that make it hard to to lay it out nicely. One is uh the if you, if you adjust the line so it, it it lets you see the the names of the lines when you when you save it and open it back up it it sort of doesn't keep that. Say that one more time for me, Jeff. It, if you if you if you lay if you adjust the line so they're laid out so that you have space between them so you can read the name, mm -hmm. if, you, if you save the flow, it doesn't keep that. When you open it back up, it's all back to like default locations. Mm. That is not ideal. So like bring A and B here, maybe from the top, right? Yeah. And then you'd take those, let's see, bring this to the top. Um, okay. Take what? And then uh oh, okay. Why is that not working? I tried the placeholder steps thing too, and that that helps a little bit, but you still end up with the same issue. So I did have one person tell me that they, when when they get in the situation that they just do like a chain of string or a string equal steps. Okay. And that 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 that's an option. Should keep. It, oh, it really doesn't keep. I mean, that I mean that's the big thing is that that is not considered. That's getting washed away. That change. I didn't know that that happened. I didn't know that the spacing on the outcome would actually modify itself. That's that's not ideal at all. Like this, this should re this should remain the way it's designed. If you drag it up so that you can see it easier. Hmm. I wonder okay. if maybe yeah. Go ahead. Just just this is just a really. I mean, it's just a really minor thing. But... I wonder if direct lines behave differently. Back to the old Silverlight days. Let's see. Let's save that. Silverlight. No. That doesn't that doesn't persist either. Oh, in fact. <laughs> wait, hold on. What just happened there? Let's see. Let's save this and close. Come back. 
So that doesn't help us do anything. Yeah, I I think we got to get a DT in just to let the it let it save. I mean the the I guess the only thing I could think is honestly I bet direct might be a little bit nicer. Like uh, if we swing if we switch to direct, and then let me delete all these because it might yeah, yeah I know and then let's paste a bunch of these guys. Oops, I do that. Yeah, I do that all the time. Uh, <laughs> let's get those backwards. Okay, so that's there. And then with direct, it might just make it a little bit easier to read since you won't be having so many kind of weird like corner shapes. This feels more like silver light right here, having kind of some kind of design like this. Um, not that this might. would be ideal but i do think it's a bit it's a little bit easier to read if you're going to have a ton yeah i can i can see it i think given what we have this is probably the best you could kind of get at today um yeah unfortunately Okay. That, that, I mean, that does look that does look better than it does with the. Yeah, I bet it's pretty. I'm sure it's pretty awful with. Uh... Yeah, I mean, it's not terrible, I guess, but here it gets a little unusable. That's a little bit easier to read, especially if you're to bring some of these off onto the actual bottom anchor point here. So yeah, I think that's about as good as I can help you out with today, sir. Yeah. And that, uh, an another thing that might help a little bit is is there a way to like adjust where on the line that the label goes? Like can you make it go more toward the right? I don't think if you click override label, you just get a label text. I don't think that you can you can't determine its location on the line today. Okay. Just checking. Yeah, unfortunately not. Unless you're to do something like this, which is probably oh no, it doesn't like that, does it? Yeah, I don't think so. Nope. Okay. All right. All right, that was kind of helpful. Thanks. Oh, you bet, man. Happy to help. All right. Who's uh who else has got questions up next? Hey, Radley, what do you got for us today? Hey, well, um, so last week we upgraded uh, dev from 8.10 to 8.17. Okay. Um, and one of the things that I found is that on forms, not, not simple forms, just regular forms, okay. is that um, if there isn't a title, if there isn't a form title, that it places either run form or maybe the, the project name. I haven't been able to determine the, the logic it's using, but it puts text on the form. Um, Like in where the title, the title yeah, yeah, where the title would normally go, even if it's a blank title on the form itself. Um, I have I've sent in a ticket and they've confirmed that that's an issue and a, a DT has uh -huh. been submitted, um, but I need to get eight seventeen into production. <clears throat> okay. And so one of the suggestions that was made was to just put a space uh, in the title property, um, just kind of trick it until we can get that fixed. Perfectly fine solution. Uh, however, I was doing some research today and I found I had about 150 forms that I'd have to do that on. Okay. Um, I didn't immediately find a way to access a form item through a through a flow to just set the, the title to a mm -hmm. space on all forms. Is that is there any yeah. way to, to do that? Let's see here. So let me create a form and see if I can recreate what you're talking about this is from you calling it from email or this is calling it inside the portal uh in inside inside the portal inside decisions yeah okay strange change we made there 
So if I debug this, it says run form. And yep. it used to be completely blank. Right, right. Because I have a, um, a, a title that I'm putting logic on and adding, you know, concatenating some different values. I see. Okay. And so you know how to set it in here in form setup, right? Like sub dialogue uh, or in on, yeah, here. Uh, I guess there's hide, but you don't want to hide it. You just want to not have anything in there. Right. Right, because I think if you hide it, it gets rid of the maximize, minimize, and close, doesn't it? It does, yeah. Yeah. For sure. Let's see. We add when we need made changes to this early on in, I think, six or something. We added this action here that we are getting ready to remove. It's like set forms title style. Yeah, haven't messed with that. And this, I wonder, could we, like, if we match... I believe this is a group action to like just use that to try to like oh but then again you don't want that because you want it to show at certain times right like sometimes forms well, have it some don't no i'm never using the the title property i'm always um adding a label uh into oh, your own I itself see, I yeah see. and then i'm I, mapping I, in a yeah. i think let me copy this flow what i'm trying to figure out is there any way to do this in mass or yeah, through, yeah, a, through exactly. a for loop or I think the best you're going to be able to do right now is going to be, I think this is, yeah, you can use this as a group action. Okay. And so here, if we could match the actual background color a little bit better. And set, and if we were to go look at this flow, yeah, let me get out of group select and let me run. We, I think your best okay. bet right now, it might be to try to, you figure out the actual color, match it, yeah, and then use that manage form title style act okay. action and group select a bunch of forms and do that. At which point, it, you, it, you could get it so that it would um, essentially hide. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Very good. Yeah, that's that's a lot less than than one at a time and out of the space. Um, mm -hmm. I can work with that. Cool. Appreciate it. Well, yeah. thank you. Yeah, and I I think though if. Yeah, if you're if you can't, then your best bet would be using flow structure report filter on forms and use that as your guide to go through and do all of them as unideal as yeah. that might be. Yeah, I have some other things that I'm doing that on for, for the breaking issues for accounts and groups. So I'm, I'm familiar with that report. <laughs> so, yeah, I yeah. appreciate it, thank you. Yeah, you bet, happy to help. All right, that's all our questions in the queue today. So let me know if you have anything. Hey, Manol, what do you have for us today? Hello, Will. Quick question. Is there any way to combine a report from simple data structure, I mean, defined data structure and flow execution extension data structure in one report? Say that one more time for me. Um, like use two different data structures in one report. Um, I, the way I would do this is mm -hmm. probably writing a query. Uh, between the tables, if they're joined in some, like, are, are they, are, are they are, do the tables join together? No, so one of them is a defined data structure and other one is flow execution extension data structure. And is it like you, it's the same, they have like the same properties that you're, that you care about? Or they're, yes, they're, the same okay. properties, but just they're just like not in the same chronological order. I would probably, yeah, then I, what I would do is write, write a query using like a union or something. Mm -hmm. And then you can create a report from the query. Gotcha. Um, that would be the best way to do that. Like, because let's say you have, um, uh, I don't think this is probably a good example to kind of walk through, but like um, you can create, you can re create reports from SQL, right? So if I, um, uh, if I wrote a SQL statement, what am I doing here? Here we go. Say create a database integration, add a query. You know, if I were to write just a standard SQL statement, SQL test one, and just say, you know, select star from entity account, and then create this. What I can then do is under create report, create a new report here, 
And if I look at my data sources, I come to common and I can open up local connection or the appropriate connection folder and I'll see SQL test one. And that mm -hmm. will give me the ability to have any of the, the rows or the columns returned as properties. So I can, they can then use that SQL statement to execute the report for me. And then if I do that, then I would, if I were to look like um, SQL union and you were to do something like SQL union here, where you were to select into the column names from tables, the cables you care about, and then put a, and union them together. This plus what I just did here would let you have in one report, all the data from two different database tables, assuming that there's a commonality in the actual columns themselves. Gotcha. And will I be still be able to use user actions? Mm -hmm. You have to pick one or the other, right? You could, um, You'd have to uh, you'd have to say like you can still override action context like in here this isn't this I'm actually fetching accounts mm -hmm. right so I can come to actions I can override the action context I'm doing like a custom query against the account table I can still select account and then identify which of these is the primary key so I don't know that you could have I don't think that you could pick or choose what you want unless you did. Ooh, you could try uh, entity header. I don't think you can actually access that. Can you do, 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 edit entity, format it, entity. Hmm. Like you want the actions for one set to be different than the actions for the other set from each table? Um. Yes, for example, like the defined data structure will have edit and query and then mm -hmm. The other data structure will have flow execution extension data structure will have the complete query user action. If it's possible. I, we do give this to you on normal reports, but I don't know how to access that. Hmm. We might need supports help to identify if there's an action context that we can use here. Mm -hmm. Because in a normal decisions report, you do get the action context by default is going to be specific to the entity that you selected on. So I can see these actions versus mm -hmm. the others. Now, I don't know if we give you that same action context as a selectable thing yeah this might i don't think we can do that today i don't think we can do the action part we can definitely do the report join mm -hmm. part i don't know tally do you know if we can do that <laughs> i don't know that we give you that i think it'd be like entity header or folder entity uh let me search for header toolbox header link header that's not it if I search for entity header, no, entity, entity data structure, that's not it. Platform design, that's not it. Yeah, I don't think we can do the action part um, mm -hmm. today. That might gotcha. um, uh, sort of entity entity ID data. I don't know that. There maybe we can do this. I just don't know how to. Okay. Um, might need supports help to try to tease that out and see if that's possible. Gotcha. And then one last thing. So I was actually trying to do that with report output handler flow where I just did the loop and connected two data structures. But with any, whenever I use report output handler flow for the report, mm -hmm. I can never use um, user actions on that. Is that like normal or? Well, the output handler flow is meant to give you like a downloadable Excel of your report, mm -hmm. right? It's okay. like, so you can, what it does is like, if you create a handler here, right? I'll just create a new handler. There you go. And then I were to run this report. 
Mm -hmm. you'll see. And then I click the go to the report header, right? And I find the download action or the print action. And then what here under format, it'll it's or excuse me, under output type, it's gonna give me that. It's it's like a custom download Excel action. Gotcha. So which one would you prefer to use um if you want to see the user actions too? Well, like, yeah, the for output handler doesn't have anything to do with user actions at all. What you, the, mm -hmm. you want to be looking at using override action context, which is very straightforward to use for a single type of data. So like all accounts are all, you know, it's just your flow execution extension data, or it's just your simple data structure data or defined data structure data, right? Mm -hmm. The tricky part is getting it to do it um, for any. For two different data structures. Right, for two different ones in the same report. Gotcha. So what so what it would be the difference between the report data source flow and then the well I got the handler flow, but what mm -hmm. what does the report data source flow does different than the other one? Then which one? Um the report field action handler flow. Report field action handler flow. Mm -hmm. So the well the flow reporting data source just lets you run a flow. Okay. To, to populate the data in the report, right? Like the output, if mm -hmm. you were to look at the, if you were to create one of those under reports here, right? Nope. Flow, there should be report data source flow. Mm -hmm. This this flow has, needs to take a complex type as its output. And whatever that complex type is, it'll run this flow. And then those are your columns and your rows in the report. It's actually sourcing the content of the report for you. Oh, okay, okay. It's like gotcha. a, instead of using SQL, you might need you might use a flow to actually run, gather, and sort of like combine the data together, right? Um, that's what a report data source flow is. What's the other one that you're referring to? I'm not sure I know that name, but report output handler flow. Yeah, and so that gets in, so report output handler. Again, this one should take outputs a file. So it's a custom, like if you want to build a very custom download file based on the mm -hmm. report, like it can do anything you want, then you would build this flow. So when someone downloads the report, they have the option of using the default Excel template or some extremely customized action here. Okay, that makes sense. So it doesn't, these flows does not do anything with like combining two data structures and then mm -hmm. have the user actions. Okay. No, correct. Maybe like you want to download this report and you'll on the Excel file, you want to create some other worksheets for un, other data too, for, I don't know why, you, right? Or, mm -hmm. or you want to run some logic and you want to color certain rows, certain colors or something in the Excel file. You want to just do a bunch of custom work, but it's all about the output is always a, a file of some kind. And that's what gets downloaded from by the user. Gotcha. That makes sense. Thank you so much, Will. Okay. You bet. Okay, let's see. Steven's got a question about mobile portal. Can you review mobile portal setup and basic mobile phone form design and what is required to connect to decisions via mobile portal without VPN? Um, that's a couple. Yeah, I'm, that's a tough one for me. Um, <laughs> I, I don't think you, you can't connect to it without you, you know, the it assumes the server is available. All right, so you just need to externalize the web app. It has to be right. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. The the setup's pretty straightforward. We do have some. Docs yeah, I read. I went through the. I went through the help. I went through the help. So if it's pretty, uh, you think it's pretty robust, then we can probably do it on our own, no issues. We just haven't done mobile form design and have a requirement to do so. So I just thought I'd ask any ask I questions see. in the event that there might be a trick that I don't know or maybe isn't documented. Well, I would say I don't think about mobile portal. So mobile portal, so don't think about, okay, you're not asking about the app here. Yeah, ultimately what you, you're really just building forms that can, you know, um, like if you look at a form uh, and you have under advanced or forms, yeah, under form setup, say you've got a, a form and you need that form to be available on desktop and mobile. Right. Um, really what you're talking about is building a, a better defined, a sort of more, more mobile, sort of specific form experience. And then you would select it here. Um, okay. And then the workflow engine knows that the user's on a phone and will show them this form versus the other form. And then you're really just talking about putting it in one long column. Um, there are a lot of limitations in terms of what you can 
do. Yeah, uh, we're, this was pretty simple. It's not okay. a, it's not a crazy. It's just querying some data. Um, okay. So I did look at the uh, restrictions. Um, yeah, a bunch well. of bunch of controls don't work today. Right. Okay. Yep. No worries. And what? Yeah. And if it's very simple, you might look at using depending on what version you're on. You might look at using simple forms, um, okay. as those those render a lot um, nicer by default on mobile than um, than the the sort of traditional forms do. Okay. And so just so I'm clear, when you, if you have a form that you want to work on the PC, you want to work on a mobile phone, you want to work on a, want it to work on a tablet, that's three forms, right? Yeah, it could be. Yep. Mm -hmm. um, and then, so from your start menu, menu, do you just go in series? Yeah. I mean, there's really no, yeah. You, you Yeah. I mean, there's really no ordering to it. Like okay. I, I arguably the, the, the desktop one can work on tablet depending, right? You right. don't necessarily need a tablet one. Yeah. Um, we've done that before. Your form factor in terms of screen size is probably fine for the desktop to work on most tablets. It's the mobile one where you have, you'd run into some sort of usability issues for the users. Okay. Awesome. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you bet. Is, all right, Manal's got another question. Is there any way to add a column for path to folder in the report or in decisions overall? Which report are you, we, we do give you folder path. It's a property on the folder data source. So if you were to create like a report of folders, and here's folder data source, full path is one of the options. And that would give you the path to that particular folder. Oh, no, like, um, sorry, I was saying like, so for example, in then Excel, we have, I, Im oh gosh, I took the data from there and every single inquiry or record has a specific file to path, which our company gives to them. And then they just like put, input all their files into it. And I was trying to do that one of our project, but I used the open URL and I, I made the path, for example, like backslash backslash ho or something mm -hmm. but it just doesn't open the file to explore a file explorer it just opens the chrome or it just wouldn't work whenever yeah. i click on action mm -hmm. link or is link is there any way to open like actual file explorer no that was like an in uh, that's like a an internet explorer old thing that used to work that doesn't work in any modern browsers as far as i'm aware we had someone who asked us for this ages ago um and they ended up using like a JavaScript control to try to create something. They never could actually open the file, but um, they they could traverse that that thing. But yeah, no, you can't. Chrome, it's a, this is like a browser limitation. It won't let you navigate and open up files on network shares. It's a security issue. Like the so if you're if the business users are asking you for that, there's uh, I don't know of a way to do that in like uh, in Chrome today because of the security limitations. Gotcha. It's, not, and it's not really a decisions mm -hmm. thing. Oh, so there's no way to do that in decisions, right? Just click on that uh, file path and it opens that file explorer. Yeah, well, we can't do it because the browser won't let you do it. And we're using the browser to, to deliver the application to your end users. Mm -hmm. it's, it's not a decisions limitation. It's like a browser. It's like a Chrome, Safari, Firefox. Those, they do not let you do that. An old Internet Explorer used to let you do that for sure. Um, but... Now that Internet Explorer, and even Edge doesn't do it as far as I'm aware, like the what they replace Internet Explorer with. Gotcha. But is there any way for allowing them to copy the, that field specific path from just a report? Yeah, you can copy out of a report. Gotcha. So whenever, like, for example, I try to do it, it just highlights it, but it never copies it. Is um, there like a certain... Um... I don't think you need to do anything specific to do it. Let's see here. Do you have to make it copyable? Hold on, is there a oh, second here? Let me do mm -hmm. this. Put two of these in. Yeah, that just that should just work. Might be an issue with the leftmost column treating itself like a link. Mm -hmm. And so, okay, can you stop that? Yeah, I can't get it to do it. Oh, there it is. Weird. Why is this being so finicky? Uh, I don't know 
that was being finicky. Might be because it's treating it like a link. Definitely for the non-left column, leftmost column, it looks like it's working without any configuration needed. So yes, whenever, you can, yeah, mm -hmm. go ahead. Whenever I do that too, and it just thinks that I'm doing a group action and it's keep like bringing the same thing. Well, it definitely does go into group select mode to give you this action at first. Like, I don't think you can copy without it. Like, as soon as you click Control C, it's gonna move into group select. Mm -hmm. Oh, maybe not. Yeah, not, and this is working fine for me. Yeah. They might, yeah, I don't, I'm not sure why you're having uh, an issue with it. Gotcha. Uh, but, but this this is just a mm -hmm. default report we just created a minute ago, so I haven't set any settings on this. Okay, gotcha. I'll check into that. Thank you so much again. Appreciate it. All right, what else do we have? All right, anybody else got anything for us? Okay, I think we'll go ahead and call it a day. Thanks, everybody. Have a great day. See you same time tomorrow.